We are at 14. You just saw the uh, bunker shot from Gary Woodland there. That was not an easy bunker shot. And that is exactly what we were talking about yeah. before with that putt. Yeah, it's the, the ice cream scoop taken out the side of the green. Had to be a yard right of that and it would have been quite good. Good speed. But it just catches the grain on the other side of that scoop and back down into that little drainage area. 67 players have gone for it today, Trevor, and only eight have made the surface. Yeah, it's just such a narrow opening to the front part of the screen, but pretty disappointed with that bunker shot because the lie was good. Flew it about two yards shorter than what he wanted. And the uh, final pairing, having a chance to see what's going on back there at the tee. Gary Woodland's ball came uh, very close, uh, came to rest very close to a drain, which is an immovable obstruction. It's not a temporary immovable obstruction uh, because that drain would be there normally whether the tournament was being played or not. Now, Gary didn't have any interference to his swing, didn't have any interference to his stance uh, or the lie of the ball. So there was no relief under the typical rule 16.1 for immovable obstruction. The question was asked uh, whether he could have got relief if he decided to putt. Uh, the answer is no, because the immovable obstruction wasn't close enough to, to the green. It has to be within two club lengths. Um, and the ball was within to, the two club lengths of the immovable obstruction, but the immovable obstruction wasn't within two club lengths of the green. If the immovable obstruction was within two club lengths of the, ball, uh, of the green, uh, and the ball was in the same spot, the ball then wouldn't have been within two club lengths of the immovable obstruction. But the other requirement um, for that local rule, if it is adopted, uh, is that it is on the line of play, and Gary's ball certainly would have uh, satisfied that condition. Another condition that they do have with that local rule on the PGA Tour and many of the other professional tours around the world uh, is that the ball must a ball and the obstruction must both be within grass cut to fairway height within the general area and that condition would have been satisfied in Gary's case but again the immovable obstruction wasn't within two club lengths of the green so there was no uh, there was no option for Gary under local rule f5. Uh, to take free relief from the interference from the drain. We well, remember the famous chip show hit at Pebble Beach across the 17th. Correct. So he likes tight lies. I wouldn't like this one. I'd go left. I'd, obviously, you can drop it and putt the darn thing. Well, he doesn't have an option. He has to chip it. You can't putt it across that. And you can't can get a drop. Trying to stun it into that false edge there and get it to spin on the second hop. Yeah, into the dark green you can see. That's into the grain. Now quick. So that left for par and a hole that was just a three wood from the tee. We've had four eagles today. We've seen a number of good shots. Tell me all about that drain there, Marcus Bobick, our PGA rules official. Uh, thanks, Ian. Uh, the drain has to be within two club lengths of the putting green and two club lengths of where his ball lies. So it doesn't, it's not applicable in this case, so uh, there would be no relief on that. And of course, he can't uh, fudge the stance and uh, make it appear like I'm, I'm standing on it or, uh, I'm, or I'm going to take a deep divot and it's in my way. He, he's, uh, he had to go ahead and hit it. Well, that can be a judgment call, too. So um, if he's going to go down after it, sometimes... Uh, He's able to talk himself into relief on that. So uh, you, you just don't want to see a player get, get hurt, you know, on your ruling as well. So uh, yes. you talk through it with the player. Talk it through and let them make the decision. 